Hello, hello. I am back with another video. And the purpose of this video is to talk about when a man disappears from the dating process and to remind us all of the feminine energy and the role that the woman plays in this particular situation. Because feminine energy is receiving and masculine energy is giving. But there comes a time in the um, dating process when a man will probably play a game and pull away and <laughs> and I don't know if I could even say that it's a game because I feel like it's more like a instinct because I feel as though men intuitively know what creates attraction since they were little boys I believe that the, the genetic makeup of them is different from a woman to be fruitful and multiply it was their role and with that role <laughs> i feel as though they are already equipped to know what creates attraction to in order to lure the woman into desiring and wanting him to a certain extent and then on top of that they have a practice with their mother or the females whatever female raised them in their life as a little boy so they tend to, as a little boy, kind of like uh, play on the emotions of the women around them, knowing that if they tell them that they're beautiful or if they make them smile, or if they do something charming, that they can potentially get their way. I want to talk about what to do when he disappears, but I want to share this in two ways. The way that Bridget used to look at it, and now the new way that Bridget now sees the situation. So how is the uh, attraction created from this disappearing act is what I want to talk about first. Well, anytime that there is like some type of an uncertainty or concern in our physical reality, we begin to think about that thing. So, for example, when a guy begins to pull back, we, or better yet, you, would begin to experience that nothingness. You begin to wonder about him. And so, you begin to wonder and create the thought. And that thought will stimulate some type of desire for him, which equals to an attraction for him. And this is what I call being in love with the idea of a man. So basically, at this moment, the best thing to do is to mirror his actions and to act like you really, you really didn't notice that he disappeared. So you're going to be doing the same thing that he's doing, going on with your life, keeping yourself busy, doing something for yourself, maybe your hair, your makeup, mastering your emotions or, or mastering the need to call him or rub behind him. That is really the most important thing. It's like mentally you have to say to yourself, I am not going to give into this. Mentally, what you're saying here is I'm going to use my logic. I'm going to turn these emotions off. Because you, in the end, you, you actually win if you use logic versus your emotions when you are in this type of situation. It's almost like... Um, like when there's a child, you ever seen a child in the grocery store catching a temper tantrum? <laughs> so a child at that age where they're catching temper tantrums, if you feed into that, they will continue. But if you leave that child lying on the floor screaming <laughs> and hollering, they'll eventually get up because they themselves begin to get tired of it. And they'll realize that you haven't responded to it the way that they thought you would by giving them the candy or whatever it is that they had wanted at the time. When I was a little girl, me and the uh, neighborhood children would go outside and play Duck, Duck, Goose. Duck, Duck, Goose was like a common game that we would all play. And um, I really didn't like the game simply because I had short legs and didn't, I could never catch nobody if I was picked to you know, to be goose. <laughs> so I get picked and it's time for me to get up and run behind them. And I'll run maybe past 
two people that you know that were sitting down in the circle and then I'll, I'll go the other way I'll stop running behind the supposedly duck person and <laughs> I'll, I'll run the other way like as if I was going inside instead and the interesting thing about this here is the fact that when I stopped running behind that person, that person began to run behind me. Not only that person, but everybody that was playing the game and sitting down Indian style in the circle, they ran behind me too, just to find out what was wrong with me. Why I didn't want to chase that person. And I say something like, no, I don't want to play this game no more. <laughs> And then they'll be like, why? What's wrong? What's wrong? You're supposed to be running behind me. And I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. And they'll be like, well, you want to play? <laughs> you want to play jumping jacks instead? You want to play hopscotch instead? They will come up with all kind of things that we could do instead because I didn't feel like chasing nobody. And using that example, that's really how human nature is. When people try to get you to run behind them and you choose not to run behind them, they'll begin to question why you're not doing it. And then they'll come behind you and see what's wrong, what's going on in your world. <laughs> they'll change the flow of what they was doing now to comply to what it is that you want. And that is the same thing that can possibly happen when somebody pulls the disappearing act on you. If you don't reach out instead when somebody do this disappearing act, you'll be just like the little baby that, you know, catch the temper tantrum and didn't get a reaction. He'll start thinking about what he did. <laughs> what he doing. He'll start thinking about the fact that he pulled this prank but you, 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 you didn't conform to it. And he'll begin to wonder why you haven't called him. He'll begin to begin to admire your inner strength is what's going to happen. And in, in the, in the, in the midst of that admiration, he may even question himself and be like, well, what have I done? Maybe, maybe she's seeing other people. Let me call her. <laughs> and, and so basically the prank that he set up for you is backfiring on him. And he's becoming attracted. So basically you flipping the dynamics of the situation. If you're able to master your emotions and refrain from calling him or reaching out for he, to him instead. So I wanted to share this with you because I often talk about mastering emotions and and this is another area that that same skill can be used in. So if you want a man to continue to hunt you, here's what you would never, ever want to do in the physical reality. You should never let him know everything about you. Be mysterious instead. You should never be too nice. No, no, no. Let him see both your sweet and sour side, the totality of you. You should never sleep with him too soon and too often. Have some type of self-discipline. You should never spend all of your time around him because you, you need to have a life before you be somebody wife. You should never let yourself go. And, and that means your outer appearance, your beauty, your aura. You should never always be available via cell phone or text. You could, you could miss a call or you could text later, not within the first five minutes. And last but not least, you should never, ever pursue him, even when he disappears. Part two, this is the perspective of my shadow self. What to do when he, when he disappears is quite simple. Yes, I would go on with my life because I am a firm believer of having a life outside of a man. 
But at the same time, after maybe four to five days, if I haven't spoken to him, I believe it is at that point where I would break the ice. Because I already know full heartedly I am not a basic chick. I already know full heartedly that I am not a thirsty, needy, begging, crying, or any low frequency name that I can think of type chick. <laughs> and with that being said, me calling would not give the energy of a low frequency being because how can I how can I go low when I'm high? How can I go to being a basic chick when I'm a lady? It just doesn't it doesn't add up. So I will make the call and I would leave a voicemail or if he would answer, I would speak softly in a feminine tone and I would say to him, hi, I haven't heard from you in a few days and I started to feel some uncertainty on whether or not you were okay. So I was just reaching out to find out for myself. If it's a voicemail message that I'm uh, leaving, I'll be like, okay, Speak with you soon and in the call. And the reason why I'm saying this to you all is because people get to a point in their life where they ain't playing no games no more. Like I myself, if, if I know about the game and when I sense that a guy is trying to play a game with me and fast track me or do something crazy to get me to emotionally do a cartwheel or something like that, I'm gone. It's like... Uh, 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 I dated you back in, in 2004. You're going to get up out of here with all of them games. Because people get tired of that. You get to a point where you get tired of the game playing to that extent where you trying to manipulate people and, and, and invoking strategies and doing psychology. No, if you got to do all of those things, then something is clearly wrong with you. <laughs> because we're supposed to be even graduating from those type things in the physical reality. And another thing that I want to share or shine light on is a simple fact that he's already masculine. He's already, he already know how to, 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 to stop communication with you. He already knows how to be silent and close himself off from you. So if you're going to be doing that too, it's, it's almost equivalent to having two masculine energy beings trying to start a relationship. Where's the feminine piece? Who going to be the lady? Who's going to be soft? Who's going to be submissive? Who's going to be vulnerable? Last I checked, that was the woman's role. So... Bridget would say to you, give it a few days, call them, be soft, be feminine, and express how you feel, the uncertainty you feel, and then let it be. And the, I'm in doing it this way, there is no wonder and thought after you do that. Now you know you reached out, and even on his part, now he knows that you are genuinely concerned about him. Sometimes men want to know, do you even care? What are you here for? You couldn't reach out to me anymore after I brought you on all those dates. What if something happened to me? So, you know, it's just, it's just food for thought. You choose which way you're going to move when he disappears. But no matter which choice you make, you still have to balance those emotions. In either case, if you're going to sit there and wait and, and, and never call, or if you're going to call and express yourself, you have to balance those emotions and make sure that they are in a soft, feminine self-expression. This video was from my heart to yours, babe. Be blessed.